Hello, I'm Dr. David Mayer. I have a PhD in philosophy from Columbia University. I've been teaching SAT for four years, and I also teach philosophy at Columbia Secondary School in New York City. Let's look at sentence completions on the SAT. Here's one. You'll notice that uh, there are blanks in the sentence. That's because we need to complete the sentence. We'll complete them by choosing one of five choices. I haven't shown them to you yet. Uh, let me explain why that is. Imagine you're going to a restaurant and you're looking at the menu. If you don't know what you want, you'll be looking at the menu saying, hmm, that sounds good. Uh, maybe that one. Let's see. How about, oh, that one sounds good too. And it takes you forever to do it. But let's say you already know what you want. You'll look at the menu and you'll say, hmm, good, they have it. There it is. And it takes much less time. Uh, that's what we'll be doing on the SCT also. Um, so that means that when we read the sentence, we re look at the sentence first, and we decide ahead of time, before we look at the answer choices, what it is that we want. Okay, so we'll be looking at the clues in the sentence to figure that out. So let's look at the clues in this sentence. I'll read it out. Laboratories had been warned that provisions for animal protection that in the past were merely blank will now be mandatory. Blank of this policy will lose their federal research grants. Okay, so what are the clues in this sentence? The clues are often structural clues that tell you what the sentence is doing. Here's a structural clue. Um, something in the past was merely blank and is now mandatory. Okay, so that's a contrast clue. Something in the past was merely blank and now it's mandatory. So what goes in the blank? Something not mandatory. Not mandatory. Okay, so the first choice will have to be something that means not mandatory. If it doesn't mean not mandatory, we don't want it. How about the second blank? Blank of this policy will lose their federal research grants. Okay, well, who's going to lose their federal research grants? Somebody who doesn't do something which is now mandatory. Okay, so when we get to there, we'll have to see something that we'll look for a, a word that means he didn't do it. Okay, so now that we know what we're looking for, let's look at the answer choices. And let's see which one we want. Okay, uh, we want something in the first blank that means, not that means not mandatory. Does comprehensive mean not mandatory? Not really. How about nominal? Well, nominal means in name only. That means it could be, it could be the opposite of, not ma of mandatory. Well, let's, let's, not, uh, let's not eliminate it yet. We'll eliminate the first one. Keep this one around. How about this one? Disregarded. Well, that doesn't mean not mandatory. Recommended. Merely recommended and, and, now, and now mandatory. That sounds okay. So we'll keep that one. How about compulsory? Compulsory means the opposite of mandatory. Um, that's no good. Okay. Uh, well, we're down to two. And let's see if the other one fits. Uh, how about this one? Nominal, uh, merely nominal, advocates of this policy. Well, advocates of this policy are people who, who follow the policy. They, they believe in the policy. That's the opposite of what we want, so that's no good. This is the only one that makes sense. Let's check it. Uh, laboratories that have been warned that provisions for animal protection that in the past were merely recommended will now be mandatory. Violators of this policy will lose their federal research grants. That makes perfect sense. That's the one we want. Okay, let me tell you something about this one that I want you to notice. Uh, this one we rejected because it's not, it's not right. Compulsory is, not, is the opposite of uh, what we want. We wanted uh, not mandatory. Compulsory means mandatory. Now, if, you didn't, if we didn't take the time to figure out what we wanted ahead of time, we might very well look at compulsory and go, oh, compulsory, yeah, that means mandatory. That's the one I want. But it's the opposite of what we want. That's how they trick you on the SAT. You can't let them do that. Now let's look at one of the types of multiple choice questions on the writing section of the SAT. Error identification. Here's a sentence. There's either something wrong with it or there isn't. If there's something wrong with it, it's going to be one of these four things that they've identified. If there isn't, we will choose answer choice E, no error. 
So let's read the sentence and see if anything jumps out at us. The population of American alligators, dangerously small a few years ago, are now estimated at more than one million. Okay. The first thing you do is ask yourself if anything jumps out at you as being incorrect. Here, my ear tells me that there's something wrong with this. Now, I could just grid it and trust my ear and move on. But what I suggest you do is to check and see if there's an identifiable grammatical error. If there is, then we'll, then we'll know that that is the answer that we want. Now, it's, an, it's a verb. What is it that could be wrong with the verb? It could be a tense error. Uh, but why don't we check to see if there's a subject verb agreement error? And with the way we do that is to see if this is the verb, what's its subject? Well, it must be in here somewhere, the population of American alligators. Now, of course, we're talking about alligators. But grammatically, the subject of the verb is population. And population, it's a collective noun. So we're talking about a lot of alligators. But grammatically, it's singular. And so that means it should be the population is now estimated at more than one million. That's what makes this the correct answer. Good, good.